Well, hi everyone, I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, coming to you today from inside of a New Orleans brothel. Uh, actually, I hope it doesn't look like that. <laughs> I decided to sort of air out these curtains, and so they're sort of just hanging behind me willy-nilly. Um, classic draperies from the 19, late 1930s, and uh, everything's been washed and dried. And there's a matching bedspread and some table runners and some other pieces as well. But I thought it would be nice to just do something a little bit different, kind of, you know, elevate things a little bit because today's program is called Wow! Double Detached Retina. I can't believe he found that in a thrift shop. And everything that I'm going to show you today, I purchased in thrift shops. Now when I say thrift shops, that doesn't necessarily mean Goodwill, Savers. We don't have Savers here. I've actually never been to a Savers before. Uh, there aren't any in my area. We do have Salvation Army and Goodwill, but we have a lot of independent thrift shops, small town thrift shops uh, that may be run by churches or other organizations and uh, for instance, such as here in Philadelphia, the Philly AIDS thrift shop, where this came from, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but some of the things actually did come from Goodwill, such as this. But since I've got a lot on the table in front of me, I'm going to begin talking about each one. And this is a beautiful piece of uh, flint glass, and it's a very small wine stem. Don't worry, I'm going to do close-ups. I know you can't really see it from there. Um, but it's, it's so easy to walk by the clear glass in, in Goodwill and so forth because there's just a ton of it and our eyes kind of just glaze over it. But this actually dates to probably around the 1830s. Flint glass can, can be 18, uh, uh, 17, 1790s to the 1840s um, and roughly. Uh, it's all hand-blown. The pontal has been polished. Uh, the foot of the glass, this is called a, a, a button stem, and it's decorated. It's etched with oak leaves and little tiny acorns. This is, as I said, I'm going to do some close-ups. I'm going to insert some close-ups so you can really get a better look at it. Um, and this busy curtain behind me may be making it very difficult <laughs> for you to actually see what it is but um, and you know you can say that thumping glass means absolutely nothing well you don't get this sound from just every little piece of common glass at Walmart well that wasn't good let's try to get it I don't know if you can hear this you hear that ring that bell tone those of you who are collect, I wish you could hear this. It's still uh, just beautiful. Uh, this piece, uh, I'm sure I paid like 99 cents for, maybe a dollar, dollar fifty. That's about what they priced their stems uh, at. And um, dates to probably the 1830s. What is it worth? Well, it could sell for anywhere between $20 to $50. I'm not an expert. I did sell, oh, about 20 stems last summer, 20 or 30. I've been collecting uh, flint glass, uh, uh, wine glasses for quite some time and then just, just decided that I would sell off the entire lot. And they did quite well. Uh, this one piece with this uh, acorn, with the acorns and the oak leaves is pretty unusual and I think this would do well. Yes, in a Goodwill, a wine glass from the 1830s. Where was it made? Could have been made in South Jersey. Could have been made in Sandwich, Massachusetts. Uh, it could have been made outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, and it's just 
you know, when I look at something like this, you just wonder whose table in Philadelphia did this sit upon in the 1840s? Now let's try not to break things, Scott. Don't get too excited with your fancy pantsy uh, scenery here. Okay, not everything is necessarily, you know, I'm not showing you things that necessarily have a tremendous value. It's just unbelievable that, that you can wander into a Goodwill and there they are. This is something that I've always wanted. Uh, I have seen pictures of it in Art Deco books. This would sit on the breakfast table and uh, this would be, this was for domestic use. A lot of time people see this and they think, oh, it was probably in a store, but these were sold. Uh, it's made, it has, it's not made of copper. It actually has a copper um, a patina that is applied to it, a copper spray or finish rather. And so you would never want to strip this off because it's just, it's either uh, aluminum underneath or chrome underneath of it. And this again dates to uh, the early 1930s. And this would sit on your, it's got an easel on the back, sits on your breakfast table like that. And so while the man of the house is eating his bacon and eggs, right? I mean, that's what, what you know, he could read uh, the stock market news. Yes, so that's what this is. I hope you can see uh, how beautiful that is. The finish on it is fantastic. It's not all bent to pieces, and this is a keeper. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what's for sale and what's not. That, I'm not parting with that. Been wanting one of these forever and was thrilled to have found it. The flint glass uh, wine stem will be for sale, uh, as will this. I couldn't believe this. Do you recognize it? I'm sure that you do. Uh, it is obviously a tobacco humidor made of solid rosewood, and this would date to the middle of the 19th century, 1840s, 50s, 60s. Uh, we'll just say around the time that President Buchanan was, uh, was in, in the White House. Okay, and totally solid rosewood, rosewood would, uh, rosewood would um, hold in the moisture and keep the tobacco nice and fresh. Original finish, uh, this is just stunning. There's a, a small crack on the top, just a tiny crack right there we can see on the top from, you know, shrinkage from humidity. You'll see that in another piece I'm gonna show you in, sec in a second. But here's, we see the beautiful rosewood and this handle, this little skinny little knob on the top was never broken off. And you can see the tobacco would be kept on the inside. I wish you could smell this. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's just fantastic. I haven't even done any, I haven't even cleaned this. I've done nothing to it. And by the way, uh, the only thing I would do to it would be to wipe it off with a very uh, uh, mild soap, very, uh, uh, just a dampened cloth. Uh, if you were to take anything to this, like lacquer thinner or denatured alcohol or heaven forbid an SOS pad, you would just destroy it. Uh, so it's, it's this beautiful, warm, original, old finish. You just don't ever want to over clean something like this. Um, and this is just an amazing piece. And I am going to sell it. The value on something like this, I really honestly think that we're only looking at somewhere between 50 to a hundred dollars, maybe 125. Um, I could be slightly off on that, but uh, we know that values have, are not what they were, and we're in a very unsettled economy right now, so who knows what it would do. That also came from a Goodwill. This came from the Philadelphia AIDS thrift shop. It's a thrift shop that I go to uh, quite often. I think I've taken you there before on some of my shopping trips. And I couldn't believe it when I saw this. You're going to also see close-ups of this. But this is a mid, 
19th century, we'll say mid to late 19th century jewelry box. I believe it to be American made. It's my thought on it. Uh, and it's in unaltered, complete original condition. Starting at the bottom, all four of these tiny little feet are there. And I want you to look at how it's oxidized on the bottom. And you know, if things like this are being faked, it's uh, lathered up with a bunch of uh, stain. And if you take your thumbnail and just scratch it, you're not gonna see anything. But on a piece like this, with all this old oxidation, I'm not gonna do any harm to it. But if I scratch with my thumb, I don't know if you could see, see that right there? Let's do it again. Right there, there you see it. That's, that's all of the, that's the oxidation from a hundred years of this just sitting somewhere. And all of our nasty humid air here on the East Coast has gotten under there and oxidized the bottom of that. If this had been faked and stained, that would never happen. Anyway, the inlay on this is absolutely stunning. So I will show you, that's the front and the side. I know there's a glare from the, from the sun. And look at the back. I mean, talk about quality. This is the back of the jewelry box. What would hardly ever be seen if it were sitting on a vanity or a counter or something like that. The workmanship on this is incredible. Uh, it has a lock, which there's no key, but I'll find one. And when we open it up, it's covered in its original, uh, I guess is that maroon silk, beautiful silk, absolutely original. Uh, because there is a, there is a uh, crack in the top of it, which you see the crack right there. Now you say, oh, it's ruined. No, that's... You know, this, this happens with the humidity that we have here on the East Coast. A piece like this, it's not uncommon to see a crack. That could be, could be repaired. You get a good conservator who knows what he or she is doing with wood. I wouldn't do anything to it. It doesn't really affect the value at all. It is on the top, so it's, we, you know, we don't see it on the front at all. And we can see that that crack can also be seen running through the felt here on the inside. So this has just never been replaced. And um, so I'll let you see what happens. We open up the doors like this. I think my camera is too high and you can't see that, so I'll hold it up. Isn't that beautiful or what? You see that? This is all... Um, the main woods here are uh, American walnut and mahogany. But then there's all of these inlays, and there's fruit woods, and there's ebony, and probably king wood, and there's a piece of rose wood in the center. Just beautiful. The drawers, that knob has obviously been replaced, but these wooden knobs are original. They're also lined with felt. And so there are, uh... oh, come on. One, two, there's these drawers in the front. And then places here on the sides, as you can see. And oh yes, trust me, I went all over this thing looking for a secret, secret compartment. Oftentimes there were, there's no secret compartment on this. Wouldn't it be wonderful if she hid her jewels in here? Mm-hmm, well she didn't. Anyway, I can't find anything secret and I've gone over this thing like crazy and I don't find any secret compartments on it. Um, but it's, it has its original finish, as you can see, um, and just really an unbelievable find. Just a gorgeous piece. So probably after the Civil War, the 1870s is my guess, to the turn of the century. Beautiful piece. And that is going to be for sale. None of this is listed yet. These are all um, really exceptional items that I just haven't wanted to list quite yet. Now, before we talk about the glass, let's talk about this big guy right here. This did come from a Goodwill, and I paid $29 for it. On a bad day, I would guess it to sell for around $150. On a good day, maybe $250. 
Now there's a patent date on the bottom of 1890, I'm sorry, 1869. But this is, because it's, because the style of it is, is, is aesthetic, the aesthetic movement, which is really a precursor to the arts, the English arts and crafts movement. So we're going to see birds and flowers and, and, and images of, of uh, uh, motifs that were popular in the Orient, in Japan, and so forth. Um, it's this, with the patent on the bottom of 1869, it's, it's made sometime just after that. So the early 1870s. Uh, and it's just absolutely beautiful. It is um, made, it's made in Connecticut. It's, a, it's, a, it's an American piece. It is extremely heavy. Wait a minute. Let me get this out of the way before I break that. I will be showing you close-ups of this so that you, you can see it without this glare. Um, but this, this again, as I said, the, the company that made it was founded in 1852 in, in uh, Meriden, Connecticut, and this is the Meriden B Company. This is quadruple, I'm here, <laughs> this is quadruple plate. And uh, I don't know but whether or not you can see the wonderful, let's get that off. Can you see the wonderful bird on the front? And then, uh, you know, in this, this was the era where every square inch of surface is to be decorated. Nothing is left undecorated. We see all kinds of flowers and birds and even reclining nudes. One of the things that makes it so heavy is that the inside is lined in porcelain. There's a heavy uh, metal, imagine a metal, metal, metal liner on the inside of this thing lined in porcelain. So this really could receive hot or cold liquids. Uh, and we often think of samovars as being Russian uh, with the ability to heat up whatever is inside. So if you want to call it a samovar, you can. If you want to just call it a, a uh, hot or a cold beverage server. But this is just fan absolutely fantastic. And there are palm trees on it. There's a couple of naked ladies back here. Boy, they love putting naked ladies on stuff, didn't they? Uh, I'll show you some close-ups of this as well. So uh, be sure to not tune out until the cat meows. We'll get some good close-ups of that. Uh, and the condition on it is just absolutely unbelievable. Now, you guys all saw when I found this Quizel lampshade, art glass lampshade. Uh, this is in the pulled feather pattern with the drizzle all over it. Very uh, desirable. And it is signed Quizel, which I believe you can see right there. And it's a beautiful art glass shade, 1905, 1906 something like that. These were expensive when they were new. They were luxury items when they were new. Uh, the wealthiest of the wealthy would have these decorating their homes. The, uh, the folks that uh, founded the Cuisel Glass Company actually worked for Tiffany. They left Tiffany. Tiffany it was either he or they. It's up here, but sometimes I don't unless I... So you can look it all up. But someone left, Tiffany started the Quizel Glass Company, and that's what this is. Quizel pieces are usually signed. Uh, sometimes the signatures are fake, uh, but that's definitely all day long an original Quizel signature. And that one shade right there should, I don't know if you can pick up the beautiful green on the inside. Um, that's, that's a 50 to a hundred dollar shade and then I went back to the same Goodwill oh I don't know two or three weeks later and I found these now these are not made by Cuisel and they're not matching they appear to be I guess if you look at them from here 
And if they were hanging on sconces on either side of a fireplace, you wouldn't really be able to tell. But look at the inside and see. This one has a gold color. This one has a blue color. Um, Tiffany called this effect Favril glass. And I think Stuben, it was Stuben uh, Glass Company who called it Areen. These aren't Tiffany, and I don't believe them to be Stuben either. It could be Duran who made these. Um, Lotes. Who else made these types of shades? Stuben, as I just said. And there were a few other companies as well. I think these two shades were made by the same company. They do have the pulled feathers, as you can see, but uh, the, the coloring is different on these two shades. Both iridescent, and again, they both date to 1905, 1903, something like that. And they are in perfect condition, chip-free, crack-free. Um, if, if the colors were the same and I could sell them as a matching pair, uh, it, they would do better. Because the colors are not the same, they're just individual shades, uh, I'm not, I have no problem splitting them up because they don't match. So I'll probably be selling all three shades individually. And there were uh, beautiful bronze table lamps. We're all familiar with the gooseneck table lamps, uh, the gooseneck sort of desk lamps. Well, there were several lamps that would uh, require just a single shade. I may try to insert some photographs if I can find some. But there were also hanging chandeliers that would have a cluster of five or six of these. And um, so I have not yet decided, I might, keep one. I think I might keep the one that's got the greenish blue color on the inside and just sell this one and the Quizel shade. Uh, but they do make reproductions. How do I know they're not reproductions? Well, uh, quality, quality, quality. One of the other uh, indications when, when you look at the iridescence on an original it's going to be consistent all the way deep into the shade where the fakes, I shouldn't say fakes, but the new cheap reproductions, you're only going to get a light bit of iridescence that just barely goes down in, into the bell. But the original as this one, all the way in. Uh, but aside from that, when, uh, when, you, when you handle good glass, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and you've seen the quality pieces in person you there's there's no mistake when you see the real thing as to then ha opposed to handling a cheap reproduction this <laughs> so i'm walking around in this thrift shop i filmed in it before and the funniest thing about this particular thrift shop, there is a glass display case up front. I'm not sure why I did this, but there's this beautiful glass display case up front. And, you know, someone who's doing the pricing in the back, well, they know to turn things upside down and look for the word Pyrex and the word Fire King, right? They know that. And they kind of know what a piece of depression glass is. And so they know what blow molds are. And you walk by this display case. It's all locked up. And the Pyrex mixing bowls are in there. And the blow molds are in there. And oh, just a generic piece of green depression glass is in there. Anything that says Fire King is in this big display case. And, um, and they have these just outlandish prices on it. And uh, so it's sort of annoying because it's like, well, am I really ever going to find anything here? You have to sort of outsmart them. Well, on this particular day, I'm over in this dark aisle where they put uh, toilet seat toilets, you know, commodes. This particular store, they sell architectural uh, salvage. Uh, farm equipment. I mean, it's just anything secondhand. 
and uh, camping equipment and toilets and, and just all kinds of weird things are in this area. Uh, lots of really tacky light, light fixtures, you know, that, from the 80s. And I'm walking around and I look down. It's very dark in there. And I can just see the top of this thing st sticking out of a box. And I went, <gasps> I sucked it. I did a, you remember Fred Sanford had his, Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you, honey. I sucked in enough air. I think I sucked in an entire la layer of dust off of the shelf. Because down in the box, I saw this. Now some of you are saying that is the tackiest 1970s homemade craft I've ever seen. And some of you are saying, oh my goodness, <laughs> he found a circa 1925 Czechoslovakian glass fruit accent lamp. And that's exactly what it is. This was made in Czechoslovakia. These are popular, not for terribly long. Um, but the 1920s is the era of all these novelty lamps. We're doing all kinds of interesting things with lamps. And Czechoslovakia, that's the country for this. So after 1918, but before 1938, and right out of the early, tw early to mid 20s. Now, I will plug this in. We'll get it somewhere dark and let you see it. Obviously, you know me, I had to rewire it with, with reproduction cloth cord and, a, uh, and an original old uh, Bakelite plug so that it would look authentic. I'm not going to take this off, but the top comes off. The light bulb is inside. I will sort of turn it this way just a little bit so you can see. These are all individual pieces of glass fruit that are wired onto this cage. And then it has these, these two wonderful arms on either side. And uh, it's just for the sake of being beautiful. Um, I paid $10 for it. It says $10 on the bottom. Today it would sell for between $375 to $550. And before 2008, these consistently sold for about a thousand bucks each. Some of them are much more elaborate than this one. But what's nice about this is it hasn't been polished. Nobody went and scrubbed the patina off of the metal. The glass isn't broken. It's clean. I cleaned it, put it all back together again, rewired it so it's in absolutely fantastic condition. You're going to get some close-ups of this once I get it all lit up. But we have green grapes, red grapes, uh, cherries. Here's a cluster of... Uh, plums over here. That looks like a, a pear right there. And just uh, leaves, green leaves. Um, fantastic. Uh, this is just, I, I couldn't believe it. And uh, this is in the store where the, where the Pyrex mixing bowls are in the display case, but this was $10 in the back. Uh, I have not yet decided. I, I love, I really like this a lot. It's one of those things that I think I'll live with for a while, but uh, my taste is a little more, um, well, you know I like Art Deco. This really wouldn't necessarily be classified as Art Deco, um, but it is from just, just before that era. It could have been used on buffets uh, in the dining room just as a little accent lamp. And those of, you, those of you who are conversant with old houses know that it was not uncommon when houses were electrified for an electrical outlet to actually be placed in the dining room floor, in the center of the dining room floor, right underneath the dining room table, uh, to facilitate the use of early electric lighting on dining, on, on dining room tables. Um, 
So this, this was probably one of the most exciting things that I ever found. Um, and I was actually holding my breath when I was looking at it to make sure nothing was broken. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Wow, I Can't Believe You Found That in a Thrift Store. Um, keep your eyes open because you just never know what kind of, what treasures are out there. I thank you all for watching. I trust you're doing well at home as I am. You can see I have time on my hands, hence this beautiful set. What do you think? Ditch this. <laughs> Go back to the kitchen counter. Is it too busy? Uh, what do you think? I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.